good morning, everyone. I'm Jamie Lerner. I'm the uh, uh, chief executive at Quantum. Uh, I'm going to talk today about the cloud or large scale hyperscaler use case of tape. Uh, the core difference is that this is not a backup use case. There is no backup software, and it doesn't do a nightly backup that wakes your robot up once a day and it moves around a little bit and goes back to sleep. These systems are live file system. They're near line storage. All they've done is ripped out the hard drive and put in a tape drive. But it is a file system. It is an object system that's running 24 hours a day, and it's doing I.O. And the customer of that is OK with that I.O. being really slow as long as it's really cheap. About five years ago, we started talking to the cloud operators, and they had this idea that, hey, maybe tape could be a cheap way to build a cheap storage tier, and maybe we could back up some of our stuff in our primary tiers, place it down those lower tiers and you know, if we ever have a problem. And we started doing some experiments, and it took us less than two years to realize that we needed to sit down and do something different. Um, the systems we had just weren't really relevant. Um, and I'll walk you through what we started building that led to you know, this 16 acres of equipment being shipped or over 40 exabytes today uh, live in production. Um, and now we're basically in a model where we custom design tape systems with the hyperscalers for their business model because an off-the-shelf box does not work for them. The innovation started happening with OK, if we need to totally change the vector on cost, right? Tape in the, an enterprise tape product is not cheap enough. It's got to get drastically cheaper. And we got to be able to service it with like three to four frues and crews, right? Field replaceable parts. They got to have no tools, no training. You can replace the part. And we had to get to where we could just shove the system into a corner. Because tape, doesn't need much cooling, doesn't use much power, you can stick it in a shed. Right? You do not need, I mean, data centers in the hyperscaler are the world's most expensive real estate. Why put tape in it? Why would you ever put a piece of tape in it? Tape doesn't need a raised floor, doesn't need that heavy power, doesn't need that air conditioning. Stick it in a container truck. Stick it in a shed. Pour a concrete pad and chuck it in there. Um, so we started looking at, okay, how do we um, design tape libraries for that kind of a use case where you can't get to the front and back of it. There is no hot and cold aisle. You're going to respirate hot and cold air out one side. We just had to completely change what these things look like. We also had to totally change our software. Um, if you want to go to a totally non-redundant, super cheap library, you got to fail over. Now, the biggest issue with erasure, erasure coding is a way to go. We all know that. But the issue is if you erase your code an object across two tapes, it is so slow, it is almost useless. So we had to invent two-dimensional erasure coding where we never break an object across tapes. So you can always mount a file or an object by mounting one tape. Well, that took us building very different software. We ended up buying an object storage company and redesigning the guts of that object storage system to work with tape robotics, tape drives, and just the way tape works. And now we're able to do very high-end geo-spreading erasure coding with no performance hits. And again, we had to do that with our hyperscalers. So what this led to is um, we've been serving five of the top five hyperscalers. Again, 40 exabytes, 3 million tapes in that deployment. So to give you a sense of scale, you know, the tape could go to the moon and back three, three times. So the hardware is different. The first thing is it's got to be brain dead, just totally brain dead to service. So basically our systems now have three buttons on them. You press a button and the robot gets spit on the floor. It's part of the work we're doing with the hyperscalers is to say, look, we've got to just make this very, very easy uh, on the software stack, very easy on the hardware stack. We've even added things um, a lot of our hyperscale customers are worried about their data being stolen uh, by nation states, hackers, ransomware. So we've begun, actually all of our systems are now shipping where um, you can write the data to a tape 
and then you can put a locking bar on that tape. So if the entire system is administratively taken over by a hacker, uh, where they've just completely taken control of it, they can never gain access to that tape unless they actually physically break into the data center. And so now what we've done is taken all those learnings and packaged them for what we're calling the everyman. Um, so you can buy a half a petabyte system now that has all of this in it, has a predictive analytics, has the same erasure coding that you would see in these data centers, has the S3 interfaces, um, has a NAS interface. So you can do a file and um, object presentation tier to a tape stack. You can also do the full tiering like you would see in a cloud where you can store data on NVMe, disk, and tape. Uh, a lot of times you store them in all three and you charge different prices uh, for which one you want to pull it back from. And um, you know those are learnings that we've packaged into shipping product, all with the goal of just making tape easier to consume. And for a lot of our enterprise customers now, they, they don't even necessarily know or ever see tape because they never touch tape. They just receive a big, large rack. They plug it in. And that rack presents, you know, 14 to 20 petabytes. They line up the racks, and all they see is they plug Ethernet and power into it, and they talk S3 to it, and it runs. Um, and that uh, that has been been how we've been able to get a lot of people who just said, you know, tape's kind of a four-letter word, and I get why. I mean, you know, four years ago, I didn't really even know what tape was, um, and uh, We've been able to get a lot of customers to say, look, if you can give me this cost equation at this ease of use, I'll buy that.